AMT's 1971 Chevrolet Convertible coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello Corvette fans and welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies unboxing video. My name is Trevor Ursulescu and of course I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies and today we are going to check out this amazing kit by AMT Ertl. And this will start off our 1971 series as well. So sit back, relax, and stay tuned as we get to open up the lid on this great model kit. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. And now let's put the pedal to the metal and go down and see what's in the box. Now we roll all the way back to our 1971 Corvette showroom where we get to take a look at the amazing convertible. Convertible Corvette. So this is a 50th anniversary issue of our great Corvette kit. And as you can see, they give you some pretty neat pictures here on the side of the box. Flip it over. This nice yellow Corvette with the luggage rack. A convertible if you will <laughs> okay so let's take off the lid and see what's in the box here so right away we get our Corvette instruction sheet it says I bought it at Walmart for four dollars and ninety five cents back on June 7th 20 or 2003 It'd be interesting to try to get a model kit at that price from Walmart even since they haven't carried anything in a long time so there's our Corvette body Bit of something on there. Looking nice, our hood. Of course, I have opened this in the past to see what was inside. Oh, there's our front pan there. So we got a nice interior and our seats. And there's our exhaust pipes. The engine block looks looking really nice. And there's uh, suspension components and firewalls and whatnot. There's our chassis for the Corvette. Luckily it's not for a Dodge, right? <laughs> okay, and there's uh, another bag I opened. Our glass in a bag. It's always good to protect it from the scratches. Then we have our Chrome. The amazing decal sheet, which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. And then our wheels and taillights. And then we get this 50th anniversary Corvette fold-out. So all the kits that AMT had at the time. And the die casts. And there's our model cars there. So what I'll do is just clear up my area. And then we'll take a look at the instructions. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River Flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just gonna open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River Flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now. Here's our instruction sheet for our 1971 Corvette Convertible LT1. This of course is the 350 car, the lightweight machine. All right, so as you can see, the instruction sheet is really large. And uh, you get a nice write up in here. And of course, all our little bits about using our tools and the tips for the advanced modeler. And of course, we've got this huge map. So, what I'll do is just zoom in on sections here and we'll take a look at them one by one. In step number one, we get this nice 11 piece engine block assembly. You can see we've got our left and right hand sides of our engine with the transmission molded in place. 
Then our cylinder heads and these nice chrome valve covers for both left and right. The Chevy intake manifold, and it does have the paint callouts, so Chevy red. There's our exhaust manifolds, which are also Chevy red. And the oil pan and our front water pump cover going on here. So this is a good assembly step. Let's see how we complete the engine. Now that we've got step number two, we've got the open element chrome air cleaner, the carburetor, our ignition shield, the starter motor, the air pump, the alternator, our fan belts and pulleys, and our fan. Now with the engine out of the way, we get into our rear suspension and chassis. So here we have our chassis pan, which it says to paint gloss black. The upper differential is aluminum, and the lower differential and rear suspension is black with an aluminum differential in here. Then we've got our rear springs and struts and our disc brakes in the back, as well as our shock absorbers. And this rear axle has been used in Corvette since 1963. Now moving on to the front of the car, we have quite an intricate front end assembly. You might even be able to make this uh, posable if you know how. So going on to our subassembled chassis here, we have the front disc brakes, our upper or front upright, that's what they call it, but it's a, yeah. <laughs> so there's our front uprights going in there. They are our kingpins, of course. And then here we've got our lower suspension, a stabilizer bar, our coil front springs, and our upper A arms. And it says here, note, front wheels may be assembled to the uprights at this time. See step 10. And here we have stage five, which we now get to see the engine getting in on the chassis. So there we've got our completed engine block with the drive shaft, locate to your differential. Then our fan shroud going on to the end of the radiator here. And then we have our upper radiator hose. And then we've got our inner wheel wells. And here's the radiator expansion tank, which glues on the side. And there's your other wheel well. So all that goes together, and then we can move on to step six. And here's step six. We are going to glue our exhaust system onto the bottom of our chassis. So remember to locate these with the little bits on our exhaust manifolds. And there's your cross member going on. All this will lock into place and look really nice. In step seven here, we have our interior going together. So here we have our nice dashboard with the steering column and steering wheel all going together, our shifter here in the floor. We've got these nice bucket seats with fronts and backs that glue down together, all into our interior tub. And then there's a decal that goes on right there for our radio. It says see color combination chart to match interior exterior colors in step 13. And here we are with step eight. We've got our firewall, which you paint gloss black. Do not cement to the sides of the body. Interesting. There we've got our wiper vacuum can, our power brake booster, and our master brake cylinder all gluing together. We've got a separate piece of glass here with a rear view mirror that pops down into place. And then here we've got our interior with this nice tab on the back that locates in under here on our body. It says paint hood, body, front and front pan before assembly. See interior exterior color combination chart for color selection in step 13. Let's do steps 9 and 10 together as I can fit them both in this frame here. So here we have our hood, which is a car color, and our lower front pan. The uh, glued up body and everything will pop onto our assembled chassis. There's an optional luggage rack as well, a top and a bottom. This is always good when you're going off to the beach or whatever and you need extra room in the back. Because I don't think these actually had any trunks. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, yeah, because the spare tire is going up in there and all kinds of other things. Tape hood to body. Remove tape after assembly. Carefully spread body sides apart. Insert chassis front end first and bow the back end into position. So there you go. Now here's our wheels and tires for step number 10. You have the regular stock Corvette type wheel going in here. The steel one for the LT1 going into the tire. And then there's a little pin here and the wheel inner. And uh, this is for the front end and for the back. Of course, we just have the wheel, the tire, and the rear. Now, if you want wire wheels in here, which was a Corvette optional wheel, 
you can look to AMT's 1970 Chevy Impala. There's a nice set in there if you don't want to use those wire wheels on your Impala. And here we have step number 11. You do have optional top assemblies. And I do believe you get all the windows for them, so you could build both and switch as you feel. So you have an optional hard top here, which is the car color. And the window goes in the back. And then you have the soft canvas convertible top. You can either paint it flat black or flat white and your window going in there. And then we have the 1971 bumper going into the front of the car. Actually, the 7071 and 72 are all the same Corvette. They all have the, the same grills and sides there. And there's our wheels going on as well. Oh, and there's an outside mirror here too. <laughs> and here we have the car body flipped upside down which is showing us the squared out exhaust tips, which were the 70, 71, and 72 uh, special treatment in the back here. And then we have our two taillights, or sorry, our two, yeah, two taillights, and the two other taillights with the white backup lenses in here. And our chrome bumpers going on to the back. Our final step here is step 13 with the decal placement. And here's where we see our exterior and interior matchup color paint charts. So it does say some cool things. There's Ontario orange, for example, and it would have a black interior or a saddle interior. So you had black, red, uh, sorry, black, blue, red, and saddle as your interiors and your exteriors. You have all these different ones here. Uh, now this is interesting. You can make up your own signs from things on the decal sheet using some scrap plastic or cardstock. Use uh, Evergreen Styrene Sheet. We do have some available at Monster Hobbies. I don't have them online as of yet, but keep watching for that in the future. www.monster-hobbies.ca Or come into our store, Unit 42B, 11th Avenue, Southeast, High River, Alberta, Canada. Anyway, I can get you all these sheets and tubes for these different signs. Here's the owner's manual. There's a decal for that, and of course another cardstock evergreen piece you have to make. It says use decal 1 on here for your LT1 stripe and then you've got either decal 9 or 10 for your front and rear license plates. And that completes our look at the instruction sheet for the 1971 Chevrolet Corvette LT1 convertible. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube and I'll leave the link in the description below. So now we're going to keep it stepping with our Corvette body here. And as you can see, it is a nice representation. You get the sun visors up there, which are nice. And it looks right. There's the grill for our 1970, 71, and 72. So you know you've got the right Corvette here. The nice Corvette script across the back here between the taillights. Up underneath, a couple of mold marks. It shouldn't be too hard to sand those out, just so they don't interrupt anything. Overall, really nicely done. There's our little grill across there. Headlights look right. Now I did start to sand this body a little bit because there are some old line, lines that run down the fenders here so I sanded this side smooth but didn't get to the other side. I guess I ran out of time somewhere. I got our hood here as well. It was loose in the box. As you can see there's a couple little mold marks under here on that fireproof matting. Actually there isn't any fireproof matting. And there's a couple more here, so your number 16 Hobby Blade should cure that. Now you can slip this up underneath here. And then there's our hood going in. Now those fender uh, innards will be able to lock in on these two little pins. 
and hold the hood in place. But as you can see, I mean, it's a pretty good fit in there, nice and tight. So again, really excellent little body here for our 1971 Corvette. And next up we have the chassis, and as you can see, it is nicely detailed. A lot of great uh, features in here. There's our spare tire cover going in, all the front assembly bits, or sorry, the suspension bits. Little pan here for the radiator. And then underneath there are some mold marks. This one's pretty high on this side, so get rid of that with the 16 hobby blade, number 16. And your interior should fit in there quite nicely. Now, if we get our car body back up here, you can see how well this is going to fit in place. Just like the real Corvette. These Corvettes are really nice to build. I've built a few in the past. Have a few more to go. This is, of course, one that I'm trying to do in my series from 1953 to 2003, the 50th year. And I'm going to paint them white with a red interior, just like the original car came in 1953. Here we have all our gray components, and as you can see, there are three parts trees, as well as these additional parts, which might have been on the part tree at some point in time. Anyway, so here we have our engine and engine there, and then the rear axle. We have our interior stuff in here, and then we've got the underhood and chassis components, as well as the rest of our suspension. There's our exhausts here, and our front pan. So, let's see, what is exciting? Well, move these out of the way, and take a look at this engine here. Now you can see all the nice crisp detail on there. Really a beautiful job of the Chevrolet 350 engine. There's all the intakes and everything. Very nice. Look at the suspension there. It's really in good shape. Turning it over. Um, yeah, it's some mold marks, but nothing too severe. Remember to, with these pins, always make sure the flash is really removed off of there. Because otherwise you'll lock your wheel in. They got the little pegs on the top, so they are going to click into place. So moving that out of the way. Here we've got our interior. You can see the little hatches underneath in the back. That was all you really had for storage in these Corvettes. But of course you're not really using it as a family car, so that should be all right. And there we've got our pedals and the interior panels there molded into our bucket. And then there's our bucket seats with a nice upholstery. A good representation of the 71 Corvette dashboard. It's got the little pockets here to store your maps and whatever, as well as your gauges and speedometers and all that, speedometer, tachometer, and all the rest. So again, a little bit of mold marks along here where it's going to tab in in the back, so you might want to remove those. Overall though, the mold marks are under the seats and behind, which is nice so that you don't really need to scrape them because the seats, of course, will cover all that area. So now let's look at the suspension and firewall components. There you can see the nice work in the A-arms, the springs, the axles, the kingpins, four-way disc brakes, which is nice, pretty uh, advanced for the day. And then, of course, our firewall here with all the little bits and pieces. Again, nice, nicely crafted work. Along the back, of course, we've got a lot of mold marks, so make sure you get rid of them with your number 16 hobby blade and sandpaper. Okay, so let's just put all these parts back for now. I didn't really get into our mufflers in the front pan, but that's okay. Whoops, broke a little piece off there. Anyway, there's our gray components. Here we have the chrome. Can you dig it? Well, if you can dig it, here's our rear bumpers. There's our Chevy steel wheels, as well as the front grille, our gear shift lever. There's a carburetor, air cleaner, valve covers, the chrome shield for our distributor, the alternator, the square exhaust tips, the mirrors. Is this actually a part? I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, there's our luggage rack and the rear luggage rack bar. One thing about my chrome tree here, it is pretty twisted. 
So I hope that doesn't affect any of this stuff in here. It doesn't really look like it warped any of that. So it should be good, it should be groovy, copacetic. Anyway, there's our front grille, and I think AMT did a really nice job of that with the proper square headlights in there, because remember the uh, earlier Corvettes had circular headlights. And the egg crate grills all looks really nice. Th these are sort of like Camaro style wheels. Probably why I don't like them that much. I do like those wire wheels from the 70 Chevy. Okay, what is that thing? Oh, that's just a thing. It's weird. Maybe that's our antenna. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so yeah, looking at the valve covers, they have the proper Corvette logos on them. Which looks good. The open element air cleaner, of course, looks nice as well. Again, overall, very nice. Next up, we have our glass components for our Corvette here. And there we've got our front convertible window. We also have the rear windows here. And then our tail lamps. Hey, one thing I just realized, in those parts, the gray parts, I don't have the two tops. So um, I might have them in one of my other Corvette models. I'll see if I can dig those up. Anyway, so there's our tail lamps. And of course, in the center ones, you want to put that white dot for the backup lens. And then there's ours there. Let's just take a look at these backup lenses. There, you see they look quite nice. You can put the chrome ring around the outside and everything. They do look correct. On the back there's pins, which will plug into the rear part of the car. So again, overall, a really nice. Let's see if I can dig those tops up. So here we have the convertible tops. This one, of course, being the hard top with the convex type window. And then we've got our convertible here. And uh, actually, I guess it's concave, eh? Concave goes inward. Okay, so there you can see the nice fit you're going to get with that convertible top. And of course, our hard top here. The hard top comes and touches the edges of the little compartment here. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, Corvette guys, but you fold this thing out this way and put the top in somehow. <laughs> Maybe not the hardtop one, but the convertible for sure, because that would fold back in there. Now, as we flip this under, you can see, of course, the bracing for the convertible top. I don't know, can you? Anyway, there's some mold marks under there. And, of course, the glass that I showed should go in the back. Underneath the hardtop, a couple little mold marks, but you could smooth them out. There are some little chrome tips on there, so remember to get those with your bare metal foil, as well as the windshield frame and all the rest. So again, the tops are nice. You don't have to glue them on. You could actually, uh, well, paint them up, put the windows in, and flip back and forth to see which ones you like. Or, you know, on Christmas, put this on. On New Year's, put that on. Whatever. <laughs> Next up, we have our four Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. And these, of course, are the bias belted tires that I've shown in many videos in the past, uh, which means that the cords in here are running this way and then this way, and then they have uh, steel belts going around this way. So, of course, that's the tire technology back in this. I think these came out in the late 60s, if I remember right from doing this too many times. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is just, the bias belted is a type just before radial tires. So there was still a bit of flex, but they were pretty good. Of course, it's got the Goodyear script on there, and the Polyglass GT with a nice tread. A little buzz around in your um, sandpaper and wheel thing will make these look terrific. Here we have our decal sheet for the 1971 Corvette LT1 convertible. And as you can see, you get a choice of two different LT1 stripes, black and white. You get all these nice little decals under here for things like the fan shroud, the battery. There's the owner's manual, the radio, I believe, or gauges. Kind of hard for me to see from this angle. There's our signs, no parking except for Bob, which was sort of a funny joke back in the day, like the 90s, early 2000s. There's the Corvette Drive and... Chevrolet Drive signs, making your own street signs using that uh, evergreen styrene sheet. And here you can see 19 or 71 LT1. These are North Carolina plates, 
and our 50th anniversary of Corvette plates over here. Overall a nice decal sheet, easy to apply with a little bit of water. Here's my build of the 70 Corvette convertible LT1. Now when I built this model it was prior to the whole 50th anniversary thing. So because the 71 or 70, 71 and 72 are all the same car, this of course was just marketed as a 70 I believe Corvette convertible at the time. But you can see I gave it a nice lacquer metallic red on here. It's also another reason why it doesn't have any license plates. I think the only one it had was something that said LT1. Anyway, there it is. You can see the beauty of it. Now, I don't have this top glued on, so you can just take it off for a minute. And of course, spin the car around. And very nicely done by me. <laughs> I don't know. But it goes together all nice and well. So now I'll just open up the hood and take a couple of pictures around the car. And that completes our dirty, dirty lowdown of the 1971 Chevrolet Corvette. And if you've built this kit in the past, let us know how you liked it, how you found that it fit together, if you customized it in any way, shape, or form, and share that on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great review, and next week we will be looking at another Corvette. This one, of course, is a John Greenwood Sebring Corvette from 1971. Another kit loaned to us from James, good friend James. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. Hey, if you're looking for great deals on plastic model kits, don't forget to check out www.monster-hobbies.ca and sign up on our newsletter because there's all kinds of cool flyers and stuff with discount codes where you get to save some great values on these model kits. So until next time, everybody, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address www.monster-hobbies.ca Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.